I will now discuss Buddhism and whether it has any relevance to the state of supreme intelligence or the state of Buddha. In the perception of most people today, Buddhist and non-Buddhist alike, Buddhism is seen as a prescribed way of life preached by a person called Buddha, where meditation meaning controlling or developing the mind is the path, practices of austerity play an essential role and it's a doctrine or a philosophy to achieve enlightenment. At the outset, I must say, none of these I've just mentioned are applicable to progress in the path to enlightenment or state of Buddha. I hope you will see the reasons for it as we go along. On the basis of that kind of code of conduct and meditation, it is no wonder that nobody has attained enlightenment for the past 2100 years. This is, however, about to change in the near future and in fact the change has already begun though in a small scale in the various corners of the world as the true path to experience and seeing or true path to reality and Nibbana has opened up recently. Perhaps the reason why Buddhism in the present time is so popular in spite of the fact that nobody has attained enlightenment is that people feel there is some truth in what the fundamentals of the Buddha message tell us compared to the message of the established religions in the world today. Or perhaps because it's also a message that not only encourages but leads to peace within and one that does not advocate violence, suppression, division, conflicts and wars, etc. In fact, the message of peace and code of conduct has taken a dominant role or has overtaken the message of attaining intelligence, so much so that it has been limited to preaching about peace. But in the real world, we see ever-increasing violence and conflict even in the Buddhist countries. This is because preachers have forgotten that entering the path to enlightenment is the only way to conquer the mind which is the one that produces and nurtures such evil thoughts. After all, if you get into the mind, that is what I mean by conquering, you will remove the base on which such thoughts arise. When you get rid of the mind, a new system of processing information arises in the body. This system will process information without thinking and will not have evil thoughts and actions. Back to Buddhism. Tracing the history a little bit, the original teaching of Siddhartha Gautama, commonly known as Gautama Buddha, born over 2600 years ago, according to history, was experienced and seen by hundreds of thousands of people during his lifetime and for over 450 years thereafter. After this period, with the disappearance of such enlightened ones, the message was lost. There was no religion then, but after the message was lost, it became converted into a religion, with a prescribed way of life, with a code of conduct, chantings and prayers, etc. As time passed, various communities added their own interpretations without actually experiencing and seeing. They also added cultural aspects to it and it became a code of conduct to satisfy cultural needs and identities. So-called scholars appeared during the course of time giving new definitions and interpretations to the message. Before it was written down about 2100 years ago, the message had changed into a religion of prayers and worship and less importance had been given to actually attaining enlightenment here and now in this life. Attaining enlightenment was put back to a presumed future birth contrary to what actually Gautama Buddha said and more importance was given to Gautama Buddha as a person in spite of the fact that he quite categorically stated there is no actual self or a person existing within 
and that such a feeling is an illusion brought about by the thinking process. Disagreement started to happen among Buddhist communities and because of different views, fractions and divisions started to form separating into Mahayana, Theravada, Vajrayana, etc. Over a period of time, worship, reverence, rites and rituals were added according to respective cultures. It then became confused and mixed with practices of Eastern religions. Symbols of Buddhism appeared and became worshipable objects. Instead of paying respect to the teaching, the people became misled to believe worship, prayers, chanting, etc. will bring happiness and personal comfort and wealth not only in this life but into a presumed future lives, a concept borrowed from Eastern religions. This is in spite of the fact that in Dhammapada, which is a text containing some of Gautama Buddha's teachings, he clearly states when people become engulfed with doubt and fear, they will start to worship symbols in the hope that it will bring happiness instead of investigating and understanding what is actually happening within their own bodies and minds. Such practices became included in the sacred texts and in books relating to common practice. We know very well that nobody has attained supreme intelligence through such practices such as chanting verses from sacred texts. This does not mean that one should not respect symbols, but one must understand that worship, rites and rituals will not bring enlightenment or supreme intelligence. They also developed a notion that to become enlightened one has to become a priest. That is complete a misnomer and anybody belonging to any religion can become enlightened if one follows the path to conquer the thought process. Gautama Buddha actually had predicted that this would happen to his teachings and can be found in the sacred texts known as Ani Sutra in Samyutta Nikaya of the Tripitaka. Ani means nails. He stated that not long after his death, the priests themselves in the same lineage will implant nails in his teachings. Nails here means their own versions. He stated that they would implant so much nails that finally, before long, the teaching will disappear and only the nails will be left. When this happens, he said that no enlightenment will happen. He also had mentioned that when the true path opens up, the existing priest will oppose any such change. The emergence of a religion called Buddhism, therefore, is this nail version which became categorized among other religions and currently people are entangled in it without being able to see the truth of reality and Nibbana. It has become only words, phrases and verses to please people's minds and their real meanings have been lost in the religion. Nobody seems to have experienced or seen enlightenment under the banner of a religion with faiths, beliefs, worship of a supernatural person called Buddha. So Buddhism in this way has become one of the religions of the world today and at times even competing with other religions. Buddhism in fact has become a way of life for many others for their own personal benefits of mundane life rather than attaining enlightenment. Over a period of time added to this newly created way of life or Buddhism were various methods currently known as meditative techniques some of which are hallmarks of various Eastern religions. These were added at times in honesty to protect whatever left in the message, however mixed up, to compete with other religions, Western religions in particular, which have become forced upon uneducated societies in Asia and Africa following imperial invasions in the past. Meditations of various kinds currently meaning calming, controlling, or developing the mind have become so widespread in the world today that it has become almost synonymous with Buddhism. Whereas the key message of attaining supreme intelligence is to relinquish 
or get rid of the influence of the mind, commonly known in Buddhist circles as Nekkamma, if one harbors this troublemaker called the mind, control developed or otherwise, it is bound to prevent one from entering the path to Nibbana or Nirvana. Mind always, and I mean always, produce illusions, however controlled or developed, and however purified, and how much good thoughts one cultivates, it only knows to produce an illusion. Furthermore, this mind does not know, and it cannot see reality and Nibbana. Not only it can never see the ultimate truth, but also it does not know how to direct one towards supreme intelligence. Although some claim that deep meditation one can achieve a thoughtless state, they do not realize that the fact that they are awareness of it as a thoughtless state is also mediated through the mind. In other words, a thought, not obvious at the time during meditation. That means any consciousness or being awake during meditation is always thought and mind mediated. The meditator during this state is unaware that it is a thought. He is only aware of being awake and that awareness itself is a thought. That is what the mind is. It deceives and takes you away from reality. There are of course temporary benefits of meditation such as lowering blood pressure slowing of the heart rate and feeling calmness in the mind, they will only last for a few weeks at the most and that is after intense meditation. Mind will start to become troublesome again soon and that is the way mind is. And meditation has to be done again and again to get a longer lasting benefit but never permanent. There are also some psychological benefits of helping to reduce anxiety, alleviation of reactive depression, etc. Although these are considered diseases of the mind, the product of illusions such as seeing trees, houses, roads or even if your own body seen is not considered as an aberration of the mind in the society in our day-to-day -day lives. The essence of a message of enlightenment is to conquer and get rid of this troublemaker, the mind. The troubles it creates are called thoughts, which are illusions, which undermine the truth, reality and Nibbana. As I mentioned earlier, the conquest of the mind is known as Cheto Vimukti or release from the thought process. That means abolishing the mechanism and the components that help to produce a thought. You may have some understanding by now that the achievement of this cannot be done via a religion called Buddhism which has, as I mentioned earlier, a prescribed way of life by practice of austerity and code of conduct, by meditation, by considering the path to enlightenment as a doctrine or a philosophy. Philosophies, doctrines, theories, mathematic formulae are all thought mediated and therefore not conducive to enlightenment. The path to enlightenment should not be considered a doctrine or a philosophy that can be analyzed or criticized by thinking and by writing theses and obtaining degrees in universities. It is no surprise therefore that nobody who has obtained a doctorate in Buddhist philosophy in a university has attained Nibbana or Supreme Intelligence. As we come to the end of this part of the discussion, it is important to know what features are not present and also not lead to Nibbana, so that one could avoid the pitfalls of following the trail of thoughts. Path to Nirvana is therefore not a religion, belief, worship of anything including gods and other supernatural beings or supernatural states or entities, no messengers, messiahs, spirits, spirituality, theism, not describing a self or a soul, not reconnecting with any state of Brahma or gods or any previous or future births, no transmigration, karma, rebirth, reincarnation, relinking after death, not a way of life, code of conduct, chanting, 
vows, prayers or bonds. Not meditation, that means not controlling or developing the mind. No faiths, confessions, rites or rituals, sacred or divine. No expectation of help or blessing from a natural or a supernatural source. Not a cultural system. No reverence, morality, ethics, lifestyle, veneration, set of duties or social services. No sacrifices, festivals, feasts and celebrations. No prophecies, theories, dogmas, theology, laws, mathematical calculations. And no philosophy or not a doctrine. As these are all thought mediated, so you will be pleased to know you are completely independent of all these and not bound to any of these I mentioned before. When mind and thoughts are freed, it will become easy to conquer the mind and thoughts. You would have noticed that I said in the path to Nibbana, from before entering the path to the end point, there is no notion of religion, karma, rebirth or relinking, which sadly are hallmarks of current practice of Buddhism. It is interesting to note that in Brahmajala Sutra of the Diga Nikaya of the sacred Tripitaka, Gautama Buddha is said to have clearly stated that his teaching is not a religion. He also says in it that those who consider the teaching as a religion are misled and hold the wrong view, also called Mitya Ditti. Also, it is interesting to note in Majjhimanikaya of the sacred Tripitaka, a sutra called Devdaha Sutra, Gautama Buddha explains to the followers of Mahavira, the founder of Jainism, that the theory of Kama, also called Karma in Sanskrit language, is not his teaching, but the teaching of Mahavira, who was the leader of Jainism. Buddha teaching, he states in this sutra, is not karma, but cause and effect, well known as paticca samuppada in Buddhist circles. So the notion of karma, rebirth, relinking, religion are later additions and are borrowed from Eastern religions. So in summary, the path to supreme intelligence is not an ism called Buddhism. The proof of this statement is obvious, as since the advent of an ism, there have been no enlightened ones, attaining absorptive states during meditation called dhyanas, is not attaining Nibbana, as these states are mind-mediated and thought-mediated illusions and are mere temporary control states of the illusive mind. By now, you would have some idea as to why current practice of Buddhism has not produced the desired result of people achieving the state of Buddha, reality or Nibbana. In my next discussion, I will explain the difference between a religion and a philosophy on one hand and experience and seeing Nibbana on the other hand before I explore the path to Nibbana.